Hello everyone, it's good to see you back. I've been playing around in Onslaught mode to see what type of builds can be done in the given environment. While Solar Warlock, Strand Titan and Void Hunter have been the best, I've delved deeper to unravel builds that, on the main stage, would get you laughed at. For example, when was the last time you used Manticore, and did you know Manticore got a number of buffs? If I was to tell you that Jar Falcon and Manticore combined would give you healing, overshield, invis, damage reduction, and non-stop volatile rounds, would you believe me? Well, today's video will cover that and more, so let's get started. The idea of the build is to allow the user to have a non-stop way of producing volatile rounds while also getting damage reduction, healing, ability cooldown, and increased damage. All of this can be triggered from two exotics in mind. Mandicore exotic trait, Sword Fang, states dealing damage while grounded charges anti-grav repulsors, a dealing damage while airborne extends anti-grav repulsors. This basically allows players to stay airborne to activate it. While combining this secondary effect, Swoop and Talons, which states dealing damage while airborne increases the weapon's damage output. This perk, when triggered, will allow users to deal out 100% damage while airborne, which is huge considering how easy it is to trigger this. Furthermore, having a catalyst is also where the weapon will excel the most at, which states, while you are airborne, sustain damage and final blows against difficult combatants grant void overshield per few shots made, reduce combat accuracy, and return ammo. Basically, staying in the air, you're getting a huge number of buffs that not many other exotics are even getting. Expanding on this, applying Gyro Falcon's exotic trait, see me, feel me, will allow void weapons to generate volatile rounds after breaking our infants. So combining this with Mandicore will allow us to trigger volatile rounds non-stop while in the air and getting that damage reduction and damage boost all at the same time. Also to note, since we are going in this while in the air, it does also grant us an extra leeway of protection, since if all else fails, we could easily remove ourselves from the situation and recover without the enemies noticing. So in terms of our subclass, I have the following. A vanishing step where dodging makes you invisible. A status executioner, where defeating a weakened enemy grants true sight and invis. Echo of instability, where defeating targets with grenades grants volatile rounds, which is optional. Echo of starvation, where picking up a void breach or orb of power grants devour. Echo of persistence, where void buffs applied to you last longer. And Echo of cessation, where finisher final blows creates a burst of void damage. And breaking this down are two aspects of required for making Drow Falcon's effect more active. And while you can go with one of the two, you'll be doing yourself a big disservice doing so. Going with what I have, this will allow Echo Starvation and Echo Persistent to shine more while in fights. Echo Starvation has two ways of getting us Devour. The build is capable of producing those two ways, so we can always have Devour on hand. This will increase survivability and grenade regen as we play. Persistence is going to increase the Devour and our overshield's duration by quite a bit, so more increased survivability is added. This then leaves you with instability and cessation, which are both optional. Cessation is good as a quick way to deal with grouped enemies and also triggering Jarl Falcon's secondary effect if we are invisible. Instability is something that can stay where it is, but it can also be removed for something more beneficial depending on what you prefer, like Echo of Harvest, which can be useful for when you're using Tether, or Echo of Remnants for increasing Vortex grenades by 50%. This area here is solely down to the player to decide. For mods and stats, having a high resilience and discipline is generally all you'll need here. Resilience at tier 10 will grant users a 30% damage reduction against targets. As we have Invis, Jar Falcon secondary effect when procced, and Magical Callus effect, if you choose to, you can reload your resilience and recovery stat of your choosing, but this only depends on how your stats are and what your mods are as well. However, if you're playing in higher difficulty content, it's always best to max out your defense's abilities as fast and as efficient as possible. A discipline at tier 10 will grant you a 1 minute 16 cooldown when using Fortis grenades. As the stat still has a high cooldown to it, I've added the following mods to reduce its cooldown as much as possible. Grenade Kickstart will grant us a 34.4% to 45% grenade energy return on 4 armor charges. Orbs of Restoration will grant us a 10% ability energy for selected abilities. And lastly, Distribution for the flat 4% ability energy return. We also have Devour available via our Fragments, which will also grant us grenade energy as well. Leftover key mods that play an importance for the build as well are the following. 
charged up gives us plus one to orbs armor charges held. Then having stacks and stacks will grant us two orbs of power collected rather than one. Having harmonic with powerful attraction will make it easier to create and collect orbs of power once our class BAT is free. Lastly, having a heavy ammo finder, an additional reserves mod for spawn out void weapon, and then have ashes to assets added as well for the fast super regen as well. In terms of weaponry, as we have covered the main primary exotic we are using, the secondary and heavy of choice are the ones I found to be the most useful for what we are doing. Having Buzzard with Kinetic Tremens is the go to secondary for me to use in Onslaught, as it's great against barrier champions, great against all enemy types, but also great when using against me bosses to bosses, since Kinetic Tremens effect is quite large and noticeable against these common types. Heavy, I have the combo ration with redirection and reconstruction, which is the go to perk combo everyone should farm for. This weapon already has a large magazine size, and its damage across the board is pretty much marked as amazing as a base machine gun. Adding the two allowed the weapon to not only be useful against minor tier enemies, but also has room to be used against bosses as well. And since its magazine size will overfill over time, pairing this with Jar Falcon is honestly a great idea. Now, if you play Onslaught mode on normal or legend mode and you need a build that encapsulates all that chaos that the mode gives, then the following build should be best for you. Using this build will grant players Devour for healing, Overshields for extra protection, non stop volatile runs for added damage, increased mandicore damage by 100% while in the air, and an easy to master kit that can be familiar with players already using it. It has done me good, and it does provide a nice and weird way of playing a Void Hunter, since most people, when they see Jar Falcon being used, will want to use Graviton Lance or any Void weapon with a deadly perk combo that really pushes the build further. However, you do have to be aware that the build does lack range, so you have to keep it within the close to medium ranges to really benefit from the buff and build. On top of that, I've also noticed that the stronger the enemies are, the more rounds will require to kill most enemies, and also how exposed you are when using a weapon in air. I cannot tell you how many times I've faced a much stronger enemy than normal who would be absolutely easy for the first few waves, and then later on become a big problem the moment I am generally stuck in the air or run out of ammo. This can be make and break for the build at times as you need to rely on the exotic trait for that extra bonus it provides. Luckily, the build does provide enough survivability and flexibility to avoid being killed so easily, aka use your machine gun. But the higher you go, the more common it will become an issue over time. This is where I would say the build is best for normal onslaught mode as it's safer, difficulty ramps up much later, and it allows more room for testing for your pleasure. A legend is fine if you're able to work with the disadvantages on hand, but it can work. If this build sounds reasonable to you, then give it a try while Onslaught is still here. And if not, update to your liking. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below, but at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, I've got more stuff like this than either players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.